Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. In today's topic, I'd like to discuss why your car crank but won't start. So I'd like to talk about the most common causes that I normally encounter when I'm fixing a car. And basically the first common cause that a car crank but won't start normally is always going to be a high percentage of the time is going to be a fuel delivery issue. So when a car is not starting, I always think that it's very simple to check the fuel delivery issue. Basically all you need is some sort of starting fluid. I normally use engine starting fluid. Sometimes I use carburetor cleaner. And sometimes in some cases, if I have nothing to use, I'll probably use brake cleaner. Sometimes that works as well. To quickly check if you have a fuel delivery issue, just spray starting fluid into the uh, intake. So basically what you wanna do is move the intake um, tube and spread it directly into the throttle body and have somebody crank the engine. And if the engine turns over, that means you know you have a fuel delivery issue. So if you find out that maybe the fuel pump is not the problem, first I always check the basic, I always check the relay and check fuses. For the fuses, very simple, you just check that if it's blown or not. And for the relay, you do have to check it with the, uh, with the multimeter to make sure that it's actually functioning properly. If your vehicle is equipped with a main relay, you also want to check that. And what I like to do, I like to get a screwdriver and just tap on it. And suddenly if the engine kicks over and starts, then I know that there's a re main relay issue. Next, you want to check power going to the fuel pump. This is basically going to require some sort of disassembly. Maybe you have to drop the fuel tank to get to it. Or if you're lucky enough, you can, the fuel pump may be located on somewhere in the back seat. You can lift up the back seat and you can check power over there. If you're getting power going straight to the, to the connection at the fuel pump, then you know that the fuel pump is going to be the problem. And you, don't and you can basically rule all this out. Another fuel delivery issue could be you could have bad fuel injectors. You could, it normally is gonna take maybe one or two or three bad fuel injectors to prevent the engine from starting. So basically what do you wanna do? You wanna get a noid light and make sure you're getting um, fuel injection post going straight to the fuel injectors. If there's no injection post, then there's a good chance either you got a wire issue or maybe a crankshaft position sensor that's preventing uh, the fuel injector from working properly. Also, you can also have um, bad fuel injectors that don't, can be stuck closed or stuck open that's spraying a little too much and that can also cause some misfire. Another possibility that you can have bad fuel filter Sometimes the fuel filter, if it has not been replaced for a very long time, it can start to have a buildup inside and make it difficult for fuel to flow past through the uh, fuel filter. Basically, this will cause low, low fuel pressure and make it difficult for the uh, fuel injector to spray the adequate amount of fuel that should be going straight into the combustion chamber. So by replacing this, you may be able to fix the problem. But before you do this, you also want to check fuel pressure and make sure that it is within range according to manufacturer specification. The second most common problem is going to be lack of spark. This one is very simple to check. All you basically need is a test light. And what you want to do, the first thing you want to check is check for a bad ignition coil. You want to connect the test light on the negative side of the battery and you want to check it for spark directly at the ignition coil while trying to crank the engine. If there are no spark, then you know you possibly have a bad ignition coil. Also next, you want to check for a bad spark plug. You want to remove the spark plug and check the condition of it. If it looks completely um, bowed out or it has a lot of build up on it, then maybe it's time to change the spark plug because that will cause weak spark and make it difficult for the uh, engine to start. Next, you want to check wires going straight to the ignition coil. You want to make sure they're not broken or they're not loose. And you want to make sure that, that there are no opens at all. Also, you want to make sure you check the spark plug wire and make sure that they're actually functioning properly. Sometimes you can use a multimeter, check the ohms on it, and check the spec on the spark plug wire. Next, you want to check the distributor. This one's very simple. All you got to do is remove the spark plug wire, get a test light, check it directly at the spark, uh, sorry, at, directly at the distributor, and have someone crank the engine. If there are no spark, then you know you're going to have some sort of uh, distributor issue. The next common problem, you're going to have some sort of sensor issue. The most common one is going to be a crankshaft position sensor. The second one is going to be a camshaft position sensor. The third is going to be bad mass airflow sensor or dirty mass airflow sensor. And next is going to be a coolant temperature sensor problem. 
So basically when you have a crankshaft position sensor issue or camshaft position sensor issue, what do you want to do? You want to get a screwdriver and tap on it. And the vehicle starts right up, you know these two are going to be a problem. So basically what I find that mostly these two, why they're always failing is normally number one cause is going to be oil constantly dripping onto the sensor or the connection and that can cause it to fail prematurely. Next problem is going to be a mass airflow sensor. Usually this kind of cause a hard start. So basically what you want to do, you want to take out the airflow sensor and you want to clean it with mass airflow sensor cleaner and, and allow it to dry and, and for installation and try to start the engine and the engine start and you know you have an airflow sensor problem. Next, it's going to be a, a bad coolant temperature sensor issue. So basically when this is bad, it's going to give wrong reading to the, uh, to the, um, to the computers telling it that the temperature is completely off and it may cause the uh, fuel injector to spray a lot of fuel more than it should. Next, you're going to have some sort of compression problem. What I find that the, the most common one is going to be a blown head gasket, especially during the summertime when when engines start to run hot, especially in hot temperatures. So that's going to be the number one cause of low compression. Number two, I find that's going to be bad valves. It's going to be some sort of bad intake or burnt exhaust valves. That's also another common problem. The next one is going to be um, bad cylinder wall or bad piston rings. They could be completely worn and cause, comp and cause extremely low compression. So basically what you want to do, you want to get yourself a compression gauge and check uh, the compression. You want to make sure that all compression on all the cylinders are very, have very similar readings. And next you want to compare to manufacturer specification. If it's lower than manufacturer specification, you know you're going to have a compression issue. The next common problem is going to have some sort of timing issue. The number one cause is going to be probably going to have jump timing. Normally this is caused by a weak tensioner. It will cause the, uh, the timing chain or the timing belt to break. Also next you can have bad, actually a broken timing belt and your timing belt breaks for interference in the engine, your engine is practically done. If it's not an interference then you're lucky that the valves and the piston will not impact with each other. So next you're going to have bad timing chain. The chain can be stretched. Again, it can jump. It can have issues due to bad timing guide or a weak uh, timing tensioner. The next common problem, you're going to have some sort of air restriction. Um, for example, let's just say for the intake, you can have an extremely, extremely dirty air filter that prevents you know, incoming air from coming in. And I also find that this doesn't always happen very often, actually, probably, probably never really. But I have seen, you know, extremely built up in the uh, air filter box, like a lot of leaves built up, a lot of random stuff inside that, like, like plastic bags, for example, that get caught into the, uh, to the intake and get stuck around the, uh, the air filter area. The next common problem, you're gonna have a rest completely restricted exhaust system. Normally, normally this is gonna be caused by a completely clogged catalytic converter. So basically when you hit this point, the uh, engine can inhale, but it kind of exhale. So if it kind of exhale, it's gonna cause extremely Hard, extremely difficult for the engine to start. So make sure you get the catalytic converter checked and make sure there's actually that there's no restriction. So I named most of the common problem that does not cover every single problem, but that's gonna be the most common problem that you should check. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Top 5 Auto Repairs and give me a thumbs up.